Hello again, friends, and welcome to another segment here at Doc G's Wine and Spirits Review. Great to see all of you, and welcome back to the basement. Happy to uh, be here to um, celebrate February and get ready for an extremely cold weekend. As you can see here, we are getting ready to deal with that old thing called a polar vortex. So what other way than dealing with that kind of extreme cold could you do than get yourself ready to drink some really good heartwarming wine? Or you can wear a jacket like this the whole time, which I'm not going to do because it's already making me warm enough. So let me get rid of this and then we'll get started on the best way to warm you up for the polar vortex that is about to hit us. And my suggestion is that you follow what is here on the table. I have for you what I'm calling the three big red wines. Not the only three, but three big red wines that will help you deal with the chill that this weekend is about to bring. So with that said, let's get started. So, the real reason that I wanted to share these wines with you was to point out to you that there's a good way to warm up and you can do it with red wine. So we're going to call these the big reds and I have three of them for you. And what makes these three red wines similar and eligible to make you warm is they have an ABV. You've, if you've followed me long enough, we've talked about that. They have an alcohol by volume of 15% or higher, each one of these three. Now I have a lot of red wine and not much of it gets into the 15% and higher category until you start to get into fortified wines, which I have one here on the table as well, which we'll close out today's segment with. So how do you get a wine? Let's just talk a little bit in general before we get into the wines. How does a wine actually wind up at 15% ABV? So just a quick primer again, a review. 12% and higher gives you pretty much a dry wine. So most whites are 12, 13. Some get into the 14%, but not much. Red wines go generally, you can get some 12, but generally they're 13, 14, or 15% uh, alcohol. I've seen them as high as 16. And um, it makes a difference. It doesn't mean that the wine is going to taste stronger. It's just going to have a higher alcohol content. And again, just to review from a primer standpoint, remember, sugar is what makes wine what it is. It's the fermented uh, yeast, uh, the yeast eating the sugar and the sugar turning into ethanol. So that means when you have wines like these three here, there had to be serious sugar content in the wine as they matured on the vine. And I'm not going to get into all that science, but trust me, that's what they had to have. They had to have a high sugar content because the higher the sugar, the, the possibility to have a wine that winds up at 15% alcohol by volume is pretty good. If you don't have that kind of sugar, it's almost impossible without doctoring up the wine in some way. But if you're going to do it naturally to get to a 15% wine, you're generally talking about a warmer climate or some other way to get the sugar content elevated in the grape. And I'm gonna talk about that with all three of these wines as we go through each of the ones. So, let's get started. I'm gonna start out with the first example, and you've heard me talk about this winery. This is one of my favorite wineries, and this is in Sonoma, called Pedrincelli. This happens to be a bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon. You will find Cabernets in the whole range, 13, 14, 15%. This one, is 15% alcohol by volume. It will warm you up. So let's sample it and see what you think, or see what I think, so that you can decide what you want to do. Hmm, typical cab nose. Hmm. It's very smooth. Big alcohol does not mean that <laughs> it's gonna like burn going down like drinking, you know, tequila or whiskey or whatever. What it is going to do, it's going to give you a buzz a little faster because it's higher in alcohol. So if that sounds bad to you, don't drink it. But if you like that idea, 
and you want to get a little bit warm, drink yourself some red wine. So this is a typical Cabernet. So my recommendation to you for this weekend before your car battery dies is to go out and find a nice bottle of Cab and go read the shelves. Read the shelves and look for one that's 15% ABV. Doesn't mean it's gonna be even more expensive. Just do that. Humor me, go try it. And I'm telling you, you won't be sorry and you'll stay warm. So that is the Wisdom Cabernet 2017. And it's not atypical for Cabernet Sauvignons to be those that go higher. A lot of red wines don't push that limit because they're just not grown in the proper climate. So what other grape is typical of a wine that can get very big? Well, lo and behold, this one is a Zinfandel. And a Zinfandel is originally a Croatian grape, came from Italy and made its way to California. This one is a one, 2018 from Howell Mountain, Napa Valley. Now you don't have to have the Zinfandel I have here, and I'm not here to hawk that particular wine, but there's a lot of good Zinfandel on the shelf. And if you just go look, find yourself one that's 15% or higher. And you say, well, Doc G, what's the difference between 14.5 and 15 ABV? Well, you do the math. At those small numbers, that's a significant percentage increase in the amount of alcohol that is in the wine. And you have a couple glasses of this Zin or any of these 15 percenters, you're gonna feel it. <laughs> Hopefully you're gonna feel good and you're gonna feel warm to fight that polar vortex that's gonna descend upon us tonight and tomorrow. So let's taste this Zinfandel. Hmm. Oh, that's warm. That's really nice. So again, I'm not here to hawk Zinfandel per se, but your chances of getting in and out of the liquor store, wherever you are, with a 15% ABV bottle of wine in your hand is gonna be very high if you go to the cab aisle or if you go to the Zinfandel aisle. The rest of them, they just don't get to that point quite as easily. So um, the last wine that I wanna share with you that will really warm your heart is this one from Italy. And this one has a little bit of a special story. And this one is called an Amarone. Amarone specifically della Valpolicella. So let's talk about the grape a little bit first. Amarone is not a grape. Amarone di Valpolicella is a wine from the north of Italy around Verona, up around the um, area of Venice. So uh, it is a Northern Italian uh, blend. It is comprised generally of a grape called Corvina and another one called Corvinone, but it may have up to 10 or 12 other grapes in it. Amarones can get extremely expensive, but they have the ability, all of these high ABV wines have the ability to age decade or more, where they actually just mature in the bottle and mellow out they never lose their alcohol. They just, the alcohol continues to make the wine age and mellow out over time. Now this Amarone del Valpolicello that I have here happens to be a 2016 uh, Amarone. Uh, it's not one of the more expensive ones. As, as you know, I try to be as budget conscious as possible because of the amount of wine that's on the other side of this wall in here. So this Amarone, let me explain to you how they get this one to 15.5. Northern Italy is not really known as a, you know, climate like, uh, you know, Napa Valley and the, the heat that you get in California and other places, even in Southern Italy. But the process that they go through to make an Amarone is what drives up the ability to get more sugar in the grape. When they pick these Corvina grapes and the other grapes that they use as blends, they let them sit and they let them dry out. They let them desiccate, as they say in wine terms. And what that does is raisining. If you know what, what a, how much sweeter a raisin is than a fresh grape. So they let these lose about 40% of their weight. And at that time, they press the grapes and then they make the wine. And the alcohol content is amazing. It can go to 16% in your Amarones. It does not mean the wine is sweet. They ferment the sugar away and it is a dry wine. It's very fruity it's, and it's big. It, it will just warm your Italian and whatever heart 
<laughs> that you happen to have. So let's, let's find out. Look at the color there. Beautiful color in the glass. You'd never know that there's 15.5%. Of the three here, this one is the smoothest. That is an unbelievably fantastic wine. So if you're cost conscious, make your way into your, your liquor store, wherever it is you go. F start with a, a lower priced Amarone. I'm telling you, they can get 60, 70, $80 or more. I didn't pay that for this. I forget what I paid. I'm guessing somewhere in the neighborhood of 25. And it's been sitting on my shelf a while, so it has actually been aging as well. It's seven years in the bottle already. This, I'm gonna take another sip. Wow. <laughs> Just a side note. I, I haven't revealed much personal information, but my wife and I came down with uh, the COVID uh, finally caught up to us. And we had a little bout uh, two weeks. We actually had a rebound after we took the, the pack slowly, but we're beyond that now. But the one thing that scared the crap out of me is Doc G lost his sense of smell. <laughs> I couldn't have done this in all honesty with you a week ago even, because I just kind of got out of the COVID cave and I can smell again. The news is good. I can smell all of these wines and I can taste them. <laughs> I was in a panic when I could not smell. Couldn't smell my gins. I couldn't smell my whiskeys. I couldn't smell my wine. I couldn't smell my food. The only thing, I, I couldn't even smell Vic's vapor rub out of a jar. Luckily, that only lasted about three days and I'm back. <laughs> I'm back where I belong with this. So on that note, Try to wear a mask when you're out. It might help. You don't want to lose. <laughs> of all things, you don't want to lose your sense of smell. I'll put up with some sniffles. I'll put up with a cough. But that sense of smell, that needs to stay. So, but it is real. It's not a hoax. It's not a myth. You could lose your smell and taste. So, how do we want to say goodbye today? I'm going to move these big boys aside. And I'm going to finish with a red wine. That will warm your heart as well. And what you have before you, now this is a red wine. This is a Portuguese red. It's also a port. Now, this one is 19.5 alcohol by volume. Generally, there is no way to get to that level of alcohol without fortifying it. So, ports are generally fortified with some sort of spirit. I don't know in particular what this one is fortified with, but I know it's a, a, a group of Portuguese grapes that, um, and this Sandman you can find, it's a very uh, well, you know, stocked port in most places. So I'm gonna say goodbye to you. Cause I'm starting to get <laughs> very warm. But this is your typical port. It's a 20 port, 19.5. This <laughs> will also warm you up on a polar vortex weekend. And it'll warm you up even more. I have a recommendation for you. Go buy these Ghirardelli chocolate squares. This is a 72%, this is an 86, this is so bitter. If you don't like bitter chocolate, you won't like this, but I'm gonna start with this one. Port and chocolate are like a proverb. week ago I couldn't taste that. Mm. I can now. I'm gonna let it coat my mouth. And we're gonna follow it up. Ah, that is so good. So do me a favor. Make sure your car battery is charged. Make sure you got a lot of blankets if you're out traveling. Get your cold body to the liquor store and get yourself some big red wines so you don't have to wear a jacket all weekend or a coat. And most of all, until
until the uh, until next time stay safe and most of all stay warm and if i don't see you before the super bowl go birds